because uh, we know all that we have to go through in the here and now. We look forward to uh, glory by and by. Amen. We appreciate the song leading and we appreciate the uh, very directed prayer tonight. And uh, it's good as always to see members of the body gather again to hear another portion of God's holy and divine word. Turn with me to the uh, book of 1 Kings chapter 2 uh, where we read of David's, David's charge to Solomon. And he says, now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. We all have to meet uh, death. And he charged Solomon his son saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Last week, we talked about diffusing the landmines of compromise. But I wanted to follow up with that and talk tonight about the consequences of compromise. The consequences of compromise. Compromise would be any situation that tempts you to abandon what you know is right. These situations should be viewed as deadly and dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. Many people fail to do this and they become hooked by the subtle and the evil lure of compromise, which leads, amen, to sin. As Christians, that's you and I, we must learn how to guard our hearts and our minds against the enemy's deadly traps. We talked about Solomon as an example. You know David's son. when. Solomon was coronated king. A serious challenge was given him by his father. He said, keep charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies. At first, Solomon did what his father told him to do. Is that right? But later, he veered off the path through compromise. We compromise because of doubt. We compromise at times because of fear. We compromise for a desire for unity from peer pressure and the need for acceptance. But there are the consequences that come as a result of a wrong decision. What happens when you yield your life and your heart to the spirit of compromise? First of all, one of the things that happens is that your character, your character is weakened. Without God, your heart becomes hardened and you no longer have the foundation of his truth, even momentarily, as a basis for your life. Decisions are made many times in a moment and our relationship can be altered with God in just one moment. You can be doing all right one moment and then compromise and you're messed up the next moment. Not only is your character weakened, but your personal testimony is also diluted. Often non-believers or recent believers are the first to take notice in the shift of someone's faith. You ain't gotta say man. They notice the compromise because they're watching. Your friends outside of the body are watching you. New converts, are watching you. Every move you make and every step you take, somebody's watching you. 
Ah, they may. That is your friends you used to run with. You all have some friends you used to run with out in the world? Ah, those friends ah, may be pleased that you compromise, for it may make them feel a little better that they are, uh, you are not where you said you were. And still, they're probably surprised at your recent lapse. Someone so committed like you, someone so dedicated to the work of the Lord like you, is now behaving in ways like someone who is not nearly committed. Y'all ain't got to say amen tonight. Compromise, watch this, was a daily problem for the New Testament church. They were compromising. Most had been devoted to pagan worship. Uh, before accepting Christ, they were delivered from a very sinful environment. Like us, they had to guard their hearts and their minds with the truth of God's word to stay pure in their devotion to him. People often abandon God's word. And the final step to compromise is the abandonment of God's word and principles. We no longer consider God like we used to consider God. You remember when you faced an important decision, uh, you wouldn't take a step without prayer. Every time you had a major decision, no matter what it was, you said, I need to talk to God about it. But once you start compromising, you stop praying like you should. Am I right about it? To see what God has to say about the matter. A costly decision. Well, often we feel that we can do something that really doesn't seem to matter that much. How harmful can it be to do something that appears to be so innocent? After all, do I really need to be 100% all the time? For example, in Solomon's case, his actions were not a problem for the other nations. Remember, he started bartering and trading with the other nations. He bought some horses with the other nations. It wasn't a problem for the other nations, but it was a problem for Solomon. Am I right about it? Ah, but only God knows the plans that he has for you. And he's called his people to be holy. He says, be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11, 44. If you are involved, I hope you're listening tonight, in an activity, and every time you do it, or think about it, you feel guilty, then you need to know that God's Spirit is sending out some warning signals to you that you're standing on a landmine. The spirit of compromise is taunting you to move in its direction, but the Holy Spirit within you is telling you, stop, wait a minute, think about that thing, don't you do it. You know better than that. That's a warning sign that you're near or standing on a landmine. And you better move or get right or it's going to blow up in your life. We often ignore the warning and yield and end up detonating that landmine. We're hearing the voice of God and usually what we hear is the voice of God in our spirit that is cautioning us to heed to his commands. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, God will not compete with sin. He's not going to compete with it. And when compromise and sin are present, he can choose to withhold his guidance in your life, his friendship, until we repent of our wrong. Solomon was blessed in many ways, but he ignored God's word. Well, some of you are looking at me kind of funny tonight, and I think we need to run over and get 1 Kings chapter 11. Skip over to 1 Kings chapter 11 and watch this. Watch this now. Ah, we read something about King Solomon. King Solomon had a love. He had a lot of loves. Ah, and in 1 Kings 11, 1 through 2, the Bible said King Solomon, he loved what? Uh, brethren? Slow down now. You hear all these brethren reading at the same time? Brethren? All right. Just one, just one, just one. All right, read it. Somebody read it. King Solomon loved what? All right, he loved many foreign women. Are you with me? Along, watch this, with the daughter, the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Eb Ebonite, Hittite, Sidonian women, 
girls, girls, girls all over the globe from the nations concerning, watch this, which the Lord had said what? To the sons of Israel. What? You shall not, what? Wait, what, 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 what is it? You shall not go into them or associate with them, what? Uh-huh. These strange women are going to turn your heart away from God. All right? I'm sure that Solomon uh, felt like he knew what he was doing. He, he, he felt he had the situation under control. He thought, he said, well, you know, I'm grown and I know what I'm doing. I know how far I need to go. And perhaps he said, you know, I, I just happen to like the girl. Ah, they're not going to turn my heart. I'm stronger than that. And everyone who has fallen to sin at first said the same thing. Whether it's wine, women, wealth, or wisdom, you said the same thing. I'm stronger than that. I know what I'm doing. I'm grown. I hear what you're saying. But I'm going to do this anyway. I just happen to like the girl. Is that all right? So compromise we are talking about comes when you and I make concessions to believe or act in a certain way and we know that what we have done or said is unwise, not right, and sinful. This is the kind of compromise that we're talking about in this lesson. We're not talking about trying to get along compromise. That's another kind of compromise. You see, I don't want to be misunderstood that all compromise is bad. I'm talking about sinful compromise. There's another type of compromise that is useful in situations involving various relationships. Otherwise, we would never get anything done in the church if we didn't learn how to what? Compromise. Is that right? We've been together a long time, haven't we? And we haven't been able to stay together because uh, uh, all of us had to have our way all the time. Is that right? We have learned to compromise. Is that right? We voice, you voice your opinion, I voice mine. Your opinion is good, I think mine is. But it's somewhere along the way we need to learn and say, well, you know, let's meet somewhere in the middle. We may have opposing views in some area of work in the church or in the neighborhood instead of becoming angry and walking away from the situation. We may agree on a compromise in order to get work done and in order to move what? It's not sinful. That kind of compromise for the greater good is not sinful. Instead, it is part of our ability to negotiate, to cooperate and work with others. This was not the type of compromise that touched Solomon's heart. He disobeyed God because he wanted something other than what he already had, and he paid for it. Solomon did not even know he knew God's commandment. He grew up in David's household. He understood the principles of godly living. There were plenty of horses where he was in Israel. He didn't have to go buying horses from Egypt. He had plenty where he was. But the issue went deeper than material possessions. It was not enough that he had everything a person could already desire. Suddenly, he wanted his horses to be imported from Egypt. The very place that once held God's people captive. While he was away from home, on a buying trip. Are you with me? The enemy tempted him to become involved with much more than the purchase of a few dozen horses. What's wrong with buying a few dozen horses? Well, a lot, if it's not what God told you to do. Nothing wrong with buying them, if God, but if God said don't buy them or don't deal with other nations, then you don't need to be buying horses uh, from the other nations. Surely, however, Solomon said, well, God uh, would not mind me buying horses. God, and this is what we do, 
God wants me to be happy. This makes me happy. God, uh, as a, his child, God wants me to be pleased. And uh, maybe this is what, uh, what others thought in the Old Testament that we often read about who sinned against God. That they knew that God desired happiness for them, but uh, they desired it at the expense of pleasing God. You remember Lot compromised. And he ended up in Sodom. Abraham compromised and almost lost his wife. David compromised with Bathsheba and he lost a son. Pilate compromised and what he knew was true and denied was denied the opportunity to know the Savior. Compromise is always costly. Parenting, principles, Morality, money, doctrinal beliefs, conversation, dress, you name it. The point is honoring God in every area of our lives. Every day, we project an image that reflects our inner belief system. If your heart is set on Jesus, you want to be like Jesus. When you think about Jesus, you want to be like Jesus. Is that all right? You want to be like him in what you say, in what you do. You won't even wear clothes that you don't think Jesus uh, would approve of. Y'all may get quiet on me now. Uh, before I step out the house, uh, I'm thinking about Jesus. And I'm not going to put on something that I think Jesus wouldn't be pleased with. Are y'all listening to me tonight? Ah, so I'm careful about what I put on, even going outside, because I want Jesus to be pleased with me. Amen. Ah, oh, maybe I need to preach this on Sunday morning. Ah, uh, ah, uh, evidently some folk don't mind uh, what Jesus think, ah, uh, because they do what they want to do. But anyway, uh, compromise always leads us away from God. It starts, it's a little at first. Is that right? But the destination is always the same. What are you willing to compromise, listen tonight, to feel accepted? What are you willing to compromise to feel loved? Remember what we stated before, that Satan always dresses compromise up to look good. He always camouflages compromise. So that it's hard for us to say no. He will bring a sinful thought to mind and then hope it will resonate within us. Slowly, like the small drip in our emotions, we begin to think about temptation. Amen? The drip then becomes a trickle. And then the trickle becomes a flow that moves throughout our lives. It touches our hearts changes our minds and alters our commitment and regardless of how long you feel it may take the thought that you need to take over how the path taken doesn't seem to make sense stay on the path that God has given you God knows what's best for you but God also knows what's waiting for you in the future he may allow you to go through a time of uncertainty in your life because God is getting ready to bless you. And even though you don't know what God sometimes has in store for you, know that it's always in the end is for your good. Amen? So learning to wait and trust him for the results is a tremendous lesson that helps us to avoid compromise. Adam and Eve made that mistake. They listened to the enemy's lies, which appealed to their flesh, is that right? And then they did not seek God's counsel. God had already told them what to do, but the tempter came and told them that God really didn't mean that. And, be, and, and, and before them, literally, a, they had a paradise, right there in a paradise, with joy, peace, and prosperity, but the devil said, that's not enough. There's more for you that God is holding out on you. Go ahead and take this. 
and you will become enlightened like you've never been enlightened before. See how he works? He has to make it look good. Taking time to meditate on and study God's truth positions us for victory and prepares us to use discernment provided for every situation. Sometimes you need to be still and sit down somewhere and know that God is God. Be still and know that I'm God. Oh yes, when a when a Hogate, when a when a challenge comes, the first question that you need to ask yourself, Lord, how do you want me to respond to this situation? Take some time. Instead of going off and, and, and giving folk a piece of your mind, wait a minute, keep that. Keep that the moment and ask God, how should I respond to this situation? Then how do you want me? How should I look at this situation? Help me to know your will or at least help me to be able to accept what I cannot change. There are a lot of things, church, that we cannot change. There are a lot of things we're trying to change, but we cannot change. We need to ask God to help me accept those things that I cannot change. This will keep me from compromising. Call to me. In Jeremiah 33 and 3, the Lord said, Call to me, call to me, and I will answer you. And I tell you great and mighty things which you do not know already. There is never a time to disobey God. I don't care what it is. There's never a time when you can say, I'm going to disobey God. And perchance, maybe I'm talking to someone tonight uh, who's in a situation of compromise. You know you haven't been what God has desired you to be. But you need to know right now that God is still rooting for you. Amen. Uh, and along uh, with that, comes a rekindling of his love you you we know you love him we we know you love him but sometimes we get off track we start doing things we know we shouldn't be doing and I want you to know tonight you don't need to try and gain God's approval you already have his approval you already have his love we just acknowledge we must acknowledge your need for God in every situation every move every step and even in silence steady your thoughts and guide your prayer and if you're not in Christ tonight, if someone is in here tonight that is outside of Christ, break ties with the leader of compromise and accept God's truth and become a Christian. Won't you repent tonight of your sins and then confess Jesus Christ as God's son? If you're not a Christian, uh, you're not a Christian because you love God. You're not a Christian because you read God's word. You're not a Christian because you go to worship services. God makes you a child of God. Amen? And you become his child when you obey his word. Amen? And you must understand that sin has separated you from God. But tonight, Jesus' blood can cleanse you of all your sin. Thank God tonight for the blood. Can anybody say the blood? It's the blood that cleansed me. Thank God tonight for the blood. The blood was shed for you and me. And it's because of the blood that tonight I stand and you and I stand redeemed. And know that Jesus gave his life, shed his blood, and endured that horrible uh, death on the cross that we might gain heaven which is on the other side of this veil of tears. Jesus, the author of our faith, said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, he said, preach it to every creature. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Maybe tonight you didn't plan to be baptized, but you'll be glad you did. Maybe tonight you didn't think you were going to come and to uh, repent of your sins and confess Jesus, but you'll be glad that you did. Maybe tonight you're here this evening and you know you need to get things right with God as a member of the body. Tonight you perhaps need prayer for strength that you'll stop compromising the word of God. If you're here tonight and you find yourself in that situation, you want strength for the upcoming week. There's some things, there's some decisions that you need to make. 
and you want to make them in a way that's pleasing to God. Why don't you come and request that prayer tonight? You can do that right now while together we stand and sing the song of invitation. 